The first game in the Losers Brackets Finals for the Battle for Christmas Tournament, BFME 2, the race of the Witch King between Mr. Smog against May Shadow Fakes is all about to begin. Random Mirror, it is going to be on the beautiful map Eastfold, guys. Let's get it started. It's gonna be a great finals of the Losers Bracket in the best of seven. And the first matchup is a great one Mordor against Men of the West. I mean, Unfortunately, May Shadow Fax is the Mordor player, but he gets to play the Man of the West faction and we're gonna see Mr. Smog on the Mordor faction this time. At the top side of the map, we have the blue Mordor player Mr. Smog against the red Man of the West player May Shadow Fax at the bottom side. They are both really strong players in Rise of the Witch King guys, and now they know the factions as well, as Eye of the Sauron is gonna be used from Mr. Smog to scout his opponent. He will be able to see the two farms from May Shadow Fax. And he's starting with two slaughterhouses into the potential troll cage. It is going to be, guys. I like it. Smok is always going for crazy stuff as well. And trolls, remember in the version 2.02, version 8.4, they got nerfed big time. Now they do cost more command points. They will need much more time in order to hit level 2. And they will also not heal up that much by eating an orc anymore. And by the way, the eater orc ability will also have 30 seconds cooldown, guys. Okay, so two slaughterhouses into the troll cage. On the other side, we have an Eye of Sauron scouting everything around this side, just why not? The Man of the West player is gonna start with the Rallying Call, obviously. We're gonna have four farm start from May Shadow Fax. And yeah, by the way, May Shadow Fax is always going for crazy stuff as well. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so let's see what his choice is going to be. He will be building up a stable. He's gonna delete the stable now because he didn't want Smog to see what he's going for. He's gonna go for the stable anyway. Which, by the way, is gonna build in the backside, be built in the backside of the fortress. Okay, four farm start, but he's not gonna get punished for that just yet. He will be facing against trolls though, and Gondor Knights are not gonna be able to match that at all. Like, he will have zero counter units to the mountain troll now, joining the battlefield very soon. Which is really bad for May Shadow Fax. Okay, so the builder is moving to the top side of the map. As the first troll is joining, and he's not gonna demolish the troll cage by the way, he's gonna go for one more troll. Which is nice, because you can use one of them for offense and one of them for defense. On the other side, still only one stable up on the field, he will have to make a transition into the barracks or archer range very very soon, in order to get some counter units against this troll. Eventually you will need some pikemen if you wanna deal with the troll fast enough, but later on you will need some archers or even rangers to deal with the trolls faster. It's gonna build now the archer range, which is nice. But the farm in the front side is gonna be definitely taken down. But look at the delay now, by the way, guys. The first Condor Knight is coming out at the same time as the second troll. So by the time... Oh, he's using the Rallying Call? Is this gonna work out? I don't know. Like, this is a brave move from Mishiro Vex. How can you deal with this? He's gonna slam you on the ground all the time. What is Mishiro Vex thinking? He knows how the Moto faction works, right? He knows how strong those trolls are against Cav. And this is not gonna work, he's able to damage the troll a little bit, but they are dying in a second, even with the rallying call, hold crown stands. Holy moly guys, what a game number one. The Fiesta is built inside the series already, and the second Gondor Knight is gonna suicide as well. And that's by the way the same amount of resources he's losing right now as the troll. Troll is gonna hit level 2 now. What is happening in this game? I don't, I don't know. He has an offensive barracks at the top left side with the pikeman on the field. He will be creeping the work layer, just why not. Farm is going down. The second Gondor Knight battalion was able to survive. Brave Gondor Knights? I mean, the question is, are these Gondor Knights brave or are they just dumb? That's the, that's the big question. There is a little tiny difference between these two definitions. And I think I will have to go with the dump version of this. Uh, because he was just losing two Gondor Knights for no reason. You're gonna lose the farms regardless. Two farms are down, two Gondor Knights are down. He lost around 1000 resources only from the Gondor Knights. And during all this time the model player Mr. Smok is untouched boys. He was demolishing the troll cage after the second troll. And they are paying off every single penny. Look how devastating they are guys. Three farms down, two Gondor Knights down. Like even if we lose them now, it is absolutely worth it. That's gonna be the first attack from me Shadow Fax. But remember he was using the rallying call defensively. For no reason, they, you know, the Gondor Knights, they couldn't match the troll, even with the buff of the Rallying Call. And they are still doing what they are doing, guys. They are killing farms left and right, and one of them is level 2, almost level 3, by the way. The second one is also all about to hit level 2. 
that they're gonna have to self regeneration. This one has already. You can see he's healing up over time. One slaughterhouse has been taken down. The second one is gonna potentially go down as well, but the Easter links might be there in time. Uh, Mishirofa X has to make sure to not lose another Gondonite Battalion because Mr. Smog was able to get so many power points collected already, guys. Look at this. He's gonna take down the slaughterhouse, but he will potentially end up losing this Gondonites. They're gonna be barely able to survive. Another slaughterhouse is gonna be taken down, though. That's actually a great attack. But during all this time, the fortress is getting slammed, boys. Just why not? And can he actually do it, though? Does he have enough power points for rebuilds? No, he doesn't. He still needs one power point for that. The troll is gonna, you know, heal back. He's gonna be able to survive. He's level 3, by the way. I think it's not gonna be enough to finish off the fortress. But as long as he's able to save them, it's gonna be close. He needs to get the power points really fast now for the rebuild. Otherwise, he's gonna lose the fortress. What a game, number one. Oh, he's gonna lose the troll, though. That's unfortunate. The level 3 troll is going down just like that. Smok is making a mistake now. Remember, he was demolishing the troll cage, guys. That means no more trolls can be joining the battlefield any soon. He was able to survive with one of the trolls, but he's only level 1. And this can change everything, you know? I think the level 3 troll was the biggest win condition for Mr. Smok there. I don't like it. Like, committing against a fortress with a risk. I mean, he doesn't even know that if, you know... What happens if the Man of the West players rebuild? Then you are doomed anyway, so it's kind of a big mistake. Smok has to make sure to survive with the troll now. He's gonna try to get level 2 as soon as possible. He's microing around, but it's like playing with fire, and I don't like it at Oh, this is not even close, baby. Come on now, come on now, guys. Smok is playing with fire. He's gonna lose the troll right after, and I would not say it's worth it, Tom. I would not say it's worth it. Remember, he was having no troll cage on the field anymore, and both the trolls are dead. And yeah, killing a farm is always nice, but it is, is it worth it to lose a troll for that? I don't think so. Now, make sure Ofax is back in the game, guys. He has now enough power points almost for rebuild, but I think the fortress is gonna be in a safe spot anyway. I mean, you know, he might try to commit now, he's gonna commit. But now he has enough power point and he has to go for rebuild, guys. He has to go for it. He can just bait now. Just bait, you don't have to rush it. You can always bait with the rebuild. Just make sure that he's gonna commit against the fortress. Your fortress is gonna be able to deal a lot of damage to these units. And he can always go for rebuild. He has to pay attention now. A wall up is coming up. Smog doesn't know that if he rebuild is ready or not, but it is ready now, it's gonna be used. There is a wall up expansion coming up. He can still keep committing, by the way. I of Sauron is on cooldown, but it's gonna be up very, very soon. That means double buff on these units. Can they still do it though? That is the question. There are no units, however, around from Major Ofex for defense. And the Easterlings are smashing now with the double buff, Eye of Sauron plus the Warchan combination. And I think the Fortress is not gonna be able to survive this much damage. And it is going down. What a game number one. Fortress losing, you know, that early into the game or at any stage of the game is gonna cost you the game. As Major OFX is gonna call it GG. That's gonna be the first game in the best of seven series. We are not done yet, guys. We have still a lot of games to go. And we're gonna jump right into the game number two now. Eren, thank you so much for the follow, by the way. Appreciate that. Game number two is all about to begin, guys. This time we are on the beautiful map, Holy in Edit. It's another random mirror between Mr. Smok against Major of X. The score is 1-0 for Major of X now. So let's get it started. And the matchup is this time going to be Man of the West against Dwarves. It's a nice matchup for Dwarves, by the way. Especially not, especially when you don't know that you are against Dwarves, you can go for a, for a bad play with the Man of the West faction. So let's see. How the red dwarven player Major of X is gonna perform against the blue man of the west player Mr. Smug. If a farm coming up uh, into the early barracks, I think that's a really no, uh, really good start against dwarves. That should be working out quite nice. On the other side, we see two mine shafts from the dwarf player Major of X into a potential Hall of Warriors right after. Power point wise, Rallying Call has been chosen from dwarves and also from the man of, from the man of the west player. Okay. So, let's see what's gonna happen in the game number 2. The second farm is coming up for uh, Mr. Smog right after. He will have the units on the field faster than Major of X. Who is just building up the Hall of Warriors, by the way. The Hall in Edit is similar to the map Forts of Eisen. We have the same types and the same amount of creeps on this map. Two work layers in the middle. Then we have troll layers protecting this ends at the top right side, at the bottom left side. And we have also two work layers around this side, but also around this side of the map. Alright, so two mineshafts, Hall of Warriors into the third mineshaft is the build order from Major of X. On the other side, one farm into the early barracks, into the second farm is the build order from the Man of the West player, Mr. Smog. 
Starting off with the pikemen from Rohan. Uh, it looks like they're gonna go for the creep here. Look at the waypoint. And they're gonna hit level 2 right after. He might group them later on with the Gondor soldiers and go for the push with the rallying call. Builder now was able to see the mineshaft, so he knows that he's against dwarves now. Which is super nice. And this creep is gonna be uncontested. It looks like Major Ofax is planning to go for the troll layer at the bottom left side, which is nice. Because that's gonna give you the option to recruit hobbits from the inn as dwarves. And they are probably the best units to recruit from the inn. From all the factions. They are cost efficient, they are dealing a lot of damage. And a great counter unit, by the way, also against heroes, guys. Scoreboard is wrong, yeah, I, I saw it. I will change that. The score is not 1 0 for me, Shadow Fax, guys, just in case you are kinda. I was doing, doing a mistake. Major Shadow Fax is losing 1 0 against Mr. Smug. I will update that after this game. I don't want to leave now. I mean, I don't want to go uh, on desktop because it's going to lag the game. Okay, a man of the West player is able to see the builder uh, from Dwarves. So he will be able to kind of stop him from the creep. And the first push is going to happen now from Mr. Smug, guys. That is a mineshaft offensively in the middle of the map. And this attack. Does he have any units to defend? He has only one Guardian inside. I don't think it's going to be enough. He has one Guardian outside as well. He might be needing them both for defense. And it looks like Mrs. Mock doesn't want to overcommit. He's not using the rallying call just yet. Sometimes it's better to be patient and to wait for a better opportunity, you know? And I think he's going to do that. He's going to potentially take down this mineshaft in the front side. It's a 2 versus 1 two versus two situation which should be favoring the Dwarven player. Because pikemen are very weak against swordsmen. So yeah, he will be able to take down the mineshaft. And he should also be able to get away. Why? Because guardians are very, very slow units. Like, they can't chase you down. The fortress is being super helpful. It looks like he want to commit now on the other mineshaft. And he might be able to take it down. Because, you know, they are still quite healthy. Especially the soldier battalion is almost full health. The guardians are doing nothing. And he was not even able to creep just yet. Uh, there is another mineshaft coming up. And another mineshaft around this side at the top right side. What I like about the situation for the Dwarven player is the fact that he is getting away without using his own rallying call, guys. Like, rallying call advantage is gonna be on the side from Major Ofax, and it's huge. Like, if he gets all these Guardians into the attack from this mineshaft potentially, and uses the rallying call, he can deal a lot of damage. We have an Archie range now, uh, now up on the field for uh, for Mr. Smug. On the other side, we have rallying call available, 450 command points collected, 450 command points collected, and 3 power points afterwards, after rallying call for, Major, uh, for Mr. Smug, sorry. Okay. He is not done yet, he will be keep you know he will keep attacking all the time. He might be even able to take down this mineshaft, which would be huge. That means all the starting mineshafts from the dwarven player is gonna be gone. I hope he's not gonna use the rallying call in this situation. It would be kinda a waste in my opinion. He should be trying to go for the economical damage against Mr. Smog now. He has a lot of soldiers on the field, right? And it feels like he has like double barracks, but it's not true. He has only one barracks upon the field, guys. He's creeping, he's harassing. He's being pretty much everywhere. I hope Major Ofax is paying attention. If he doesn't, the build is gonna be taken down. He's paying attention finally. The mineshaft here will be taken down next. And Guardians, I mean, he has a lot of Guardians, but he was not able to achieve anything with these units just yet. He's losing the creeps, he's losing the trades, and he's losing the mineshafts without being able to take down anything down from Mr. Smug. He was using the rallying call in a, in a bad spot, in my opinion. He will be able to push Mr. Smug back. But I think that's absolutely fine, because Mr. Smog doesn't mind fighting around this area. He can now peel back, wait for more units, and he's gonna have now some rangers on the field. With them, he should be able to keep these farms alive. And not a single farm has been taken down just yet. That's gonna change now. Unfortunately for Mage Shadowfax, he has no buff available for these units, guys. And he's gonna lose this fight, you know, with the Guardians. He can go for a charge attack on these rangers, potentially. I think he should try to do that. The farm here is going to be taken down. We have now uh, elite archers on the field from Mr. Smog. That's going to be hard to deal with for dwarves. And an amazing game style from Mr. Smog once again with the Man of the West faction. He's playing very dominant in all these games so far. And yeah. I think that's going to be hard to deal with now for the dwarven player. But I think it's possible, you know, Major Ofex is not a player who's going to give up very soon. He's gonna fight until the very end. And we might always see some mistakes that can change the outcome of the game, guys. The mineshaft is going down next at the bottom left side. He's gonna go for some battle wagons now, finally. They are gonna be great with the leadership spot. 
The man of the West player doesn't have any way of negating the enemy leadership. That means the leadership is going to be permanently active as long as you keep the battle wagon alive. He's also being able to creep now two work layers with the Guardians but also with the Pikemen. So getting some money from the map is always nice as well. Kratoro, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. He might go for the creep but I think he's going to go for the attack. Rallying Call is available for the Man of the West player. He was also using Rebuild by the way I think to save this farm around this side. Battle Wagon is going to try to finish. Let's see. Extrovers are nice against buildings by the way. They should be able to finish off this farm which is almost level 2. Uh, extra words are much much better when you wanna go for harassment against buildings with the battle wagons unlike the men of the Men of the are gonna take a lot of time in order to take down one single building, you know? The mineshaft is going down, that's the level 2 mineshaft which is really bad for May Shadow Packs. And he's dropping down to 300 command points only, his command points capped guys. On the other side we have 450 command points but also men of the West players capped command point wise. He's using the uh, rallying call defensively. And I think that's fine for um, Major of X because, because he can just peel back. However, he has to deal with these units, which is easier said than done. Like, he has no units around this side, no Guardians. In the Battle Wagon, they can't approach these Pikemen, guys. Their damage against Pikemen got nerfed big time. On the bright side, for Major of X, he's gonna be able to creep the troll layer at the top right side. He's gonna get some money, but he has to expand. And for expanding, you first of all have to defend yourself. Okay? Uh, Man of the West player is playing very defensively. He might lose the Archer range level 2. Remember, Rebuild is on cooldown, guys. And Hobbit Allies is available with the Rallying Call. Yes, no. Yes, both of them with extra overs, no banner carry upgrade, which is something I would like to see in those kind of situations. Just to have the double buff. The ranges are hitting like a truck uh, from a safe distance. Smoke is playing very patient. Frodo is going ham. He's not using the fill of Galadriel, which put, would be nice in a situation like this. But the archer range is down, guys. It's gonna go down, definitely. The ranges are getting trampled down the second they are joining the battlefield. And I think Major of X will be able to deal a decent amount of damage, because look at this. At the same time, he's also being able to take down the barracks, guys. The archer range is down, the barracks is going down next, and that means Smok is not gonna have a single production building up on the field anymore. Like, he has no barracks and no archer range, and he can't recruit any more units. I think if Major of X manages to deal with these units, will be in a great spot. He's losing the mineshaft around the top right side. Hopefully he's paying attention around the builder. He might be, you know, he's paying attention now, finally. Uh, Major of X was able to creep the troll layer at the top right side, but he's not capturing this in for some reason. Battle wagons are remaining on the field. They are level 2 now, one of them at least. The other one is level 1 still. 5 power points collected. He's gonna go for the heal. As to avoid this pikeman, heal is gonna be used to, you know, just heal up those uh, battle wagons. Why not? Might get some more battle wagons, and I'm actually curious about his choice, why he is using the extra overs, instead of going for the banner carry upgrade for the double buff uh, on his units. And the permanent leadership is always gonna be nice on these uh, strong guardians and pikemen from the Hall of Warriors, guys. Okay, he's gonna give up this mineshaft once again. 450 command points for dwarves and 500 command points for the Man of the West player. He's rebuilding the barracks and archer range now. But Archer range is gonna be only level 1, so he has to invest the money once again if he wants to recruit some rangers. Game is still open guys, it's the back and forth game. The attack from Dwarven player May Shadow FX was really successful. Uh, still good job from, you know, Mr. Smog to keep his units alive, that's very very important. You know, sometimes you have to give up something in order to win the games later on. When you try to commit for a fight which will be hard for you to win, you will not only lose your buildings, but you will also lose all your units. The map is getting more and more red now. And Major of X looks like he is back into the game, boys. He's gonna attack now from multiple sides. He's cleaning the map, making sure to defend against those pikemen. He's expanding very nicely. And he keeps up the pressure by recruiting more and more units 24-7. There is only one range of Italian on the field, and he has not enough units around this side for defense. He has to build up a well for the for the sustain on these units. There is a there is one soldier battalion and one pikeman battalion, by the way. He's gonna lose the level almost four pikemen for no reason. In a situation like this, I think it's the better choice to just go back, you know? Not give up your units for no reason. He's gonna lose a lot of pikemen around this side as well. Luckily, he's getting out of power points. And he was going for rallying call, rebuild, heal, and he has four power points collected afterwards. 350 command points only though. That means his command points kept. 
On the other side, we have 500 command points for a mission of X. He's also command points kept, guys. He has collected four power points of the rallying coal, heal, and the hobbit allies. Okay. The farm in the backside is going to be taken down because Mrs. Smog right now has no units for defense at all. He's using all his units for attack now, guys. You have King Brand on the field. King Brand is going to be huge. And Longshot is incoming. He is not dodging. The Battle Wagons are going to use the Oil Barrel. It's going to deal damage over time. Heal is going to be used. One Battle Wagon is going down. And King Brand has now level 2 ability unlocked. The second Battle Wagon is going down just like that as well. And it looks like Smoke is going to be forced to retreat. He was losing a lot of units and taking damage over time from the fire on the ground. And Brand was not using his Slam Shot just yet. He can use it now. The, battle, uh, the mine shot is going down. Unfortunately for Mei Shadow Facts, he lost both the battle logons. Uh, Horn of Gondor is on cooldown. It was used before. From Boromir. Uh, and yeah, 350 command points only for the Man of the West player, by the way. Against 550 from Mei Shadow Facts, guys. He has collected 7 power points. The Hobbit Alliance is going to be up very, very soon as well, which can be used to attack one more time or to take down Boromir potentially. Slam shot is still available. It's still unused so far. He's gonna use it finally now on these pikemen, I'm assuming. Very well done. It's dealing so much damage, by the way. Level 3 now for Brand. That's gonna that means more DPS. More damage against the units and heroes. We are getting now the second Hall of Warriors on the field from Mei Shadow of X as well. Uh Smok is still in the game. He's not gonna give up that fast, obviously. Yes, now finally a well up on the field. The archer range is level 2 again for more rangers. Remember, Rangers with level 2 have a long shot, which is gonna be a nice wombo combo potential with Boromir's Horn of Gondor. It's almost back up. So, this combination all alone can actually win you the fights easily. Depends, of course, how many uh, ranges you have up on the field. Uh, let's see. The farm in the front side is gonna be protected. In brand, it's gonna be nice to have against the, you know, against the clumped units like this. Against King Brand, because the slam shot is dealing splash damage. You don't wanna be clumped like this. It's gonna deal so much damage and it's gonna hit multiple units at once. I mean, we have we have now double barracks. I think we're gonna we have actually triple barracks now. Look at this, guys. Three all of warriors from Major of X. I would love to see a hero here, by the way. The hero I would love to see in this matchup for Major of X is definitely King Dean. King Dean is gonna give you leadership with level one, and with level two with the stubborn pride, he's gonna give you fear resistant, which will be huge against the Horn of Gondor from Boromir. It's gonna block the the fear effect and you will be able to move which is gonna be the key to victory by the way if you want to escape the long shots from these rangers we have battle wagons on the field getting more and more of these he's gonna keep up the spam all the time with multiple guardians and you know pikemen and battle wagons as long as he can afford it he has collected almost 11 power points now after the hobbit allies which by the way is available hopefully he's gonna wait for the rallying call to be ready no, he's gonna use it now. Rallying Call is gonna be ready in about 5 seconds though. So he can go for a big Rallying Call play. But Horn of Gondor is available if I'm not mistaken. I mean, Rangers are doing a lot of work and the Hobbits are doing absolutely nothing. 11 power points now collected. On the other side, we have Tom Bombadil summon. And Tom Bombadil combination with the Horn of Gondor is huge as well. As you are able to see yourself with the Horn of Gondor into the Sonic Song ability from Tom Bombadil. Heal is coming in clutch. I think Rallying Call has been used as well. 12 power points. Power points are rising. Long shots are incoming. He's not paying attention and he will take a lot of damage for no reason. Tom Bombadil is doing a great job. He's gonna trample down King Brand and knocking him on the ground. Disabling him. Hobbits are dealing a lot of damage, but that's not gonna be enough. You can't kill Tom Bombadil. You know, most of the time it's just easier or the better way to just disengage and run away from him as soon as you see him. Look at this uh, Tom Bombadil special effect or passive. To knock down the heroes all the time. He's finally gone. Frodo is dying as well. And Mrs. Mock is doing a great job yet again. Once again for defense. Tom Bombadil was just necessary. Hobbits, uh, I mean, King Brand has to be careful. 625 command points available for Major of X. Smock always keeps up the pressure on the map. He always has some units going for harassment 24-7. Which is very, very important. 15 power points collected. And we can now assume that we're going to have Barrage. Which, by the way, can actually win you the fight around this side easily. It's gonna deal massive damage to the enemy units. Smog on the other side has managed to get 575 command points now. He has Archer Range level 2, Barracks level 1, Boromir is up on the field. His Horn of Gondor is gonna be available again. He was using the Captain of Gondor to give experience to the allied units. 
I think every Ranger now has level 2 at least. So Longshot is going to be available around the same time with the Horn of Gondor. And again, he has no counter to that. He's dealing damage slowly but surely with King Brand's arrow. Uh, that's going to need a lot of time in order to take it down in the front side. And he's going to go for the Dwarven Riches. Okay, Dwarven Riches being used on the mineshaft in between the barracks. He's, you know, it's in a, in a safe spot. It's something like similar to the industry from the Moro faction or Isengard faction. It's going to increase your resource income from the selected structure by 200%, which is huge, by the way. Long shots incoming. That's going to be massive. Look at this, guys. Booyah. Like, using, making sure that he's using the whole ground stance to be tankier. But you can see, the only win condition right now from the Man of the West play is definitely the long shot Horn of Gondor combination. And how to counter that is super easy. Get King Dane on the field. King Dane is so nice. He's so underrated. And I would love to see him. Yes, double buff, by the way, in his kit. Once you get him level 4, he can use, he can give you leadership from his passive. And then he can give you another buff or spell with the level 4. Or you can use it on the enemy units to debuff them. Which is always nice. Because look at the level from bottom here. Yes, now level 5. That means leadership is unlocked. And the ranges are gonna hit now even harder, guys. We have also another hero, I think, on the field. If I'm not mistaken. Um, no. It's not, the, it's not the case. I mean, Smok is in a turtle situation. Even though he's able to stall in the game. But I think he's scaling really nicely. Now with leadership getting more and more ranges up on the field. He will be just, you know, stronger and stronger. And in order to kind of play around that. I think the Dwarven player Mace of X has to make something happen. He's not going for banner carry upgrade. He's going for it finally now <clears throat> on this battle wagon, which is very, very important. Because with double buff, you know, with rallying call and the leadership from the battle wagon, you will need to hit multiple long shots on these guardians to kill them. Ah, here's Faramir on the field, indeed. Another hero. I was not able to see him before. It's a bad trample. The battle wagon is getting one shotted, just like that. The farm in the front is going down. But there is another attack happening from this time the Man of the West player, Mr. Smog. The farm, the mineshaft is getting dele uh, deleted. Uh, you know, he has also Boromir with leadership around these units. So he has to react to this. He needs to make sure to not lose his mineshaft with the, with the Dwarven Riches on it, guys. Very, very important. Okay, he's gonna kill a lot of farms. Potentially even this farm, which is almost level 3. There are a lot of Guardians up on the field, guys. And Smok is using mo most of his units for offense. There is a level 5 unit. Level 5 Gonda Archer unit, by the way. Okay, the farm here is gonna go down. It's a huge attack. And I think that was a mistake to, you know, move with so many Archers forward from Mr. Smok. Nice charge attack from the Guardians. I think he purchased the Banner Carry upgrade. Yes, he did. Which is smart, because it's gonna give you the charge attack advantage. It's a huge power spike. Oh, that was a nice slam shot, by the way, from King Brand. During all this time, the barracks is gonna be taken down once again. Longshot is incoming with the combination of the Cloud Break this time from the Men of the West player. Just for the permit stun. And yet again, I keep repeating myself, King Brand, I mean King Dane, would be such a great hero in those kind of situations. Especially now, after you see that the Men of the West player is going for the Cloud Break. Because Cloud Break is reloading, it's gonna be you know, eventually available once again in this match. And you will have to... You're ready to, you know, have a counter to that. Against Son of Gonzo, against, you know, Cloud Break. It's gonna be a permanent stun on your units. The Battle Wagon is going down. The Barracks is gonna be protected because of the help of the Cloud Break. And during all this time, the Man of the West player was also able to collect many more power points, guys. Luckily, there are a lot of mineshafts on the field. Look at this. So, the Dwarven player has still 750 command points collected. Uh, which is huge. He has around 13 power points available after the Dwarven Riches, Hobbit Ally is revealed, Heal and the Rallying Call. And the Tom Bomber deal is gonna be available once again. King Brand has to make sure to disengage. I mean, his Beast Slayer arrow is not gonna be that effective in this matchup. But, you know, another Wombo Combo potential now with the Horn of Gondor of Boromir and the Tom Bomber deal. He is making a lot of units, which is okay, I guess, but you have triple barracks. In order to keep this going, you have to invest 300 resources for every single Guardian. Like, in, in order to keep these units going, you have to invest 900 over and over and over again, you know? And he's also upgrading most of them with the Banner Carrier upgrade, which also costs 100 each. 525, 575 command points collected for Mr. Smok. 750 command points. Oh, he was using the barrage. I missed it. 
Oh, he was using it right there. It's still... Oh, it's... I like it. The blue fire animation from Marriage is looking nice. Very well done. He was killing a lot from Mr. Smug. But he has no follow-up. He has some units coming from this side. He was also using the Hobbit allies offensively. Uh, the rallying call is on cooldown from the Man of the West player, but also from the Dwarven player Mishid of X. This battle wagon will need a lot of time to take down this farm. The heroes are around this side. Tom Bombadil, Horn of Gonzo, and the Sonic Song. As easy as that. And you will win a fight that simply, because there is no counter to the fear. You might be able to take down this level 2 farm, which would be very nice. Rebuild is available for the Man of the West player though, so he can try to save it. Uh, the Hobbits, they are still remaining on the field long enough, I think they will have the time. Oh, Rebuild is gonna be used now. That means it's not gonna be available for the Barracks, which is almost down. Uh, he might still be able to take it down though. I mean, Frodo is not dealing that much damage. The farm is gonna be protected for now, which is very important. Uh, Faramir is almost level 5, level 6 is gonna unlock his leadership, but again, leadership doesn't stack in Rise of the Witch King, guys. So even if you have Bar Boromir's leadership and Faramir's leadership next to each other, only one of these leaderships is gonna be active. I mean, on the bright side, the Man of the West player has collected around 11 power points after the Cloud Break. That means he's only 14 power points away from the big boy. Uh, on the other side, we have 6 power points collected after the Barrage. Which is okay because he went for two 10 power point abilities. Look at this. Dwarven Riches, but also Hobbit Allies. Okay, the inn is gonna be captured by the Dwarven player Mage of X. That means we might get to see some more Hobbits now. I can't believe, but the troll at the bottom left side is still remaining on the field. And there is a huge Guardian army, guys. Yes, a battle wagon with the leadership. He has King Brand around with Slamshot being available. But there is a Horn of... Oh! Oh, that's a mistake like that. He now lost the leadership just like that, guys. Riding Call is gonna be used. Horn of Gondor is on cooldown still for the next 15 seconds or maybe 10 seconds. But with the help of the Horn of Gondor, he should be able to defend himself. He has two ranger battalions only though, and one of them is only level 1. I mean, they're both level 1. That means there is no uh, long shot ability available. The Builder. Slam shot is coming in clutch. Horn of Gondor is being used to stun the enemy units. The Builder is still dying. Um... Some of the units are not stunned for some reason. He was able to attack with one of the units for no reason. But look how the how long the stun duration actually is. Like now it's gone. It's a bad fight to take. Boromir is taking some damage, but he's quite tanky. He's level 7 after all. You know, he has 3120 HP. Kill is coming in clutch for Mr. Smog. During all this time, we have small fights happening around the top and top side between Guardians against the Rohan Spearmen. Rohan Spearmen are dying like flies against these Guardians, by the way. And I can't believe, but Mayshad of X is refusing to recruit King Dane, guys. I think King Dane is the way to go in this matchup. Because I think the Horn of Gondor is messing up Mayshad of X so much. By the way, we have a level 3 stable is incoming, ladies and gentlemen. And we all know what that means. We're gonna see some Knights of Dol Amroth very, very soon on the field. The elite units and there he is finally the long-awaited king himself king zane and that's a huge power spike because once you get him level 5 i take it back not level 4 the mighty rage is so nice it's a spell that can boost the damage of your units or debuff the enemy units plus nullify their leadership which is huge by the way but the main reason is gonna it's gonna be the stubborn pride because cloud break is almost back up like cloud break is gonna stun your units for a long time but King, King Dane is gonna say once he's level 2, no, 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 you are not stunning anything, my friend. Yes, a lot of Guardians. I would love to see upgrades coming on, coming on them very, very soon. But for that, he needs to upgrade the Forge Works first. I mean, Mithril Mail or Forge Plates on these Guardians is gonna be just amazing. Okay, Slam Shot is available. It can be used in a situation like this. It would deal massive damage. Parami is also level 5. He's gonna lose these Pikemen. Power Points are rising. We have 17 power points collected. King Dane is only level 1. He's taking way too much damage. He has to retreat. He's only level 1, so the pikemen are gonna hit very, very hard. Uh, level 2 is gonna be needed. Longshot is incoming, but the leadership double buff is always nice. I mean, they're not even having double buff because Rallying Call is on cooldown. King Dane has to be careful. He has to make sure to not die in a second after coming out from the from the fortress 30 seconds later. This lay arrow was used on Boromir, by the way, but it is it's not very effective against heroes. It is effective against ants or against something like eagles, for example, or monsters. 
King Dane is still only level 1, but uh, Cloud Break is gonna be on a huge cooldown now. I mean, that's nice for Major Ofex because he can play around it. But what is what is not that nice for Major Ofex is that Mr. Smog has collected 20 fun power points now, guys, in the game number 2. On the other side, we have 975 command points available for Major Ofex. That's almost a full command points. <laughs> Mr. Smog was able to dodge the incoming damage from the slam. And now he's finally recruiting some heroes, guys. And Dwarven heroes are so powerful. And Gimli, for example, can change the game out, uh, the outcome of the game only by himself. Once he, get, uh, once he gets the Slayer unlocked, you can always hunt Boromir and Faramir. Because you will outrun them with the speed of the Slayer. And you can two-shot them. You can kill them in a second. Uh, Shake Foundation gonna be very effective as well to kill those buildings faster. Hobbit Allies and Rallying Call might be used around this side. He's gonna go for it. Rallying Call is coming in as well. Double buff is available from, uh, from King Zane. Leadership and the buff of the Rallying Call. And there is a well in the backside healing up those units 24-7. Slam shot is incoming, but not dealing that much damage. Uh, and he's gonna go for the Man of Deal summon now. I don't like this, because that's gonna delay his 25 big time. On the other side, look the power points from Mr. Smog, guys. He's gonna have 24 now. Man of Deal is incoming. It's, by the way, the best Archer summon in the game. Unfortunately, however, he was not waiting for the Man of Deal with the Rallying Call. He could have just have, you know, double buff on these units just easily. But all the units are dying. They are forced to go all the way back. There is no reason of chasing them, by the way. You can always... He's splitting them very very smart. This way the Sonic Song is not going to be that available. Earthquake is now unlocked. And it's going to be used... There. And look at this, boys. Look at this. The level 3 mineshaft is gone. All the Hall of Warriors are gone as well. Just like that. And it's huge. Because there is not going to be a follow-up any soon. From the Dwarven player. He lost every single barracks. Every single barracks. So that's gonna change everything now, I guess. He's gonna be able to save the barracks here around this side as well. Uh, the Man of the Hill summon, let's be honest, was not very effective. It did absolutely nothing for the Dwarven player main shit of X. And I think the game just changed in a second like this. King Brand is gonna be able to get away. I don't even see King Dane on the field anymore. There is Klein at the bottom left side. He's almost level 4. But I think King Dane died, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's alive. He's running for his life. He's very, very slow. The mineshaft might be able to... Yo, that was a nice ability, by the way. The arrow, um, the warning arrow is slowing down the enemy units and enemy heroes. Look how slow he is. But there is a mineshaft now. He might be able to escape. And he's still only level 1. He was not able to get any kind of experience just yet. Luckily, he was able to save him with the help of the heal from the spellbook. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean... On the bright side, you know, it can't get any worse now. Because he lost every around, every building around this side. He has to now rebuild all the barracks. All the Hall of Warriors once again. Uh, and the good thing is, Earthquake has gonna, is going to have a huge cooldown. So you can play around that. And uh, he has collected 8 power points. So he's only 17 power points away from his own 25. And he will have Barish up very soon. Which can be used to deal with an army like this, for example. King Dane is gonna eventually hit level two for the for the stun uh, for the stun resistant against the Horn of Gonzo plus the Cloud Break. Uh, we have a stable level three, but I couldn't see any Gondo uh, any Knights of Dolamorov on the field just yet. Luckily, he has a in at the top right side, so he can you know keep you know recruiting more and more hobbits all the time. Uh, level three mineshaft around this side. Double Hall of Warriors are coming up. I think in a in a situation like this, you want to make sure to not have every building around the same area. Because you're going to give him just another beautiful <laughs> usage of the Earthquake ability next time. Okay. I think this game is not over yet, guys. Because the Barrage is going to be very nice. However, the Man of the West player was just purchasing the Fighter upgrade on these Rangers. That's going to increase their damage output. Especially against buildings. So let's see. It can be used right there, by the way. And it's going to... Oh, that's, that's what I wanted to see, boys. The Barrage is coming in clutch. I mean, a couple of these units will be potentially able to survive, but most of them are just gone like this. They are down, boys. You will be able to save one level 4 Ranger Battalion banner carrier upgrade, a banner carrier at least, from the Battalion. But they are not moving for some reason. He's gonna lose them as well. He lost, like, every Ranger just like this. You can see the DPS is increasing big time. We have now Gimli on the field as well. Like, almost every single hero is now on the field, right? Yeah. But we have also Aragorn on the field. All right. What a beautiful game, guys. That's the longest game so far in the tournament. 
And you can see yourself, the more we get to the finals, the closer we get to the finals, the closer the games are gonna become. And this is only the finals of the losers bracket, not even the grand finals just yet. Horn of Gondi is being used on the Rangers. Boromi is diving in. Slamshot is gonna be used on uh, Gloin to slow him down. And Horn of Gondi is gonna be used to stun the enemy units because King Dean is still only level 1. He was not able to get any kind of experience. Aragorn hitting like an absolute truck, by the way. And, the, you know, the Dwarven heroes are very, very slow. I think Gloin is not gonna make it out alive. Yield is on cooldown still. No, it's almost back up. Almost, almost, but not enough. Okay, Aragorn now level 2. We all know what that means. The Yeti Sword, the Blue Sword, Anduril is gonna be activated now with the Blade Master. And now the Cloud Break is coming in clutch once again. And that's why it was so important to recruit Dane much, much earlier. Atelas is gonna be used to heal up Boromir. Gimli has to be careful, the Dwarven heroes, they need to be careful, and this fight will be won once again from Mr. Smog. 12 power points collected after the Man of Steel, and imagine if he wouldn't go for the Man of Steel, he would have 25 already, you know? The Man of Steel was not very effective, let's be honest. They were not able to achieve too much. There is a level 5 Ranger Battalion, which is the maximum amount of levels you can actually have on normal units in Rise of the Witch King. Triple Barracks. He's gonna spam a lot of units, Forge works on the backside for some potential battle wagons. I mean, maybe you you wanna need some you're gonna need some men of deal or something like this, you know? He's just getting more and more guardians on the field. Maybe you can go for the siege hammers as well with level 2 and go for the attack, for a sneaky attack on the fortress. I don't know. He's gonna push back the men of the best player for now. Remember the cloud break is on cooldown and the horn of conda is on cooldown as well. Yes, Tom Bombadil almost back up. He has collected almost 15 power points after the earthquake, which is gonna be now. And rebuild is available as well to save one of the farms or potentially the level 3 stable or these two buildings. Okay, so King Dean might ho hopefully hit level 2 very soon. <laughs> He's now on the field for a long, long time, but he was not able to get any experience just yet. The farm in the front is gonna be taken down very, very fast. I don't know what he's doing. He's gonna to commit on these rangers. Uh, King Dean might potentially hit level 2. Horn of Gondor is going to be used once again to stun the enemy units. King Dean, hopefully he's going to get the experiences. Finally. Finally the stubborn pri- Oh, the slam shot. Watch this. Oh, he was not using the slam shot. It was the... Uh, this one ability. I don't know what he was using. I can't tell you. Aragorn is very tanky, but he's not tanky enough. He's taking a lot of damage from the hobbits. Tom Bombadil with a beautiful Sonic song into the leap attack from Gimli. What a fiesta, guys. What a fight in the last 5 seconds. Tom Bombadil, Sonic Song and the Gimli leap attack right after. That's crazy. Aragorn is still remaining on the field. He's almost dead though. Heal is on cooldown for Mr. Smog. And Tom Bombadil is doing a great job knocking down those Dwarven heroes over and over again. The fear resistance is finally accomplished from King Zayn. The next power spike is gonna be with the mighty rage unlocked with level 5. Gimli has to run for his life. Gimli with level 5 is gonna be a monster, guys. The Slayer is so strong. That's a nice move, by the way. Wanding Arrow is so nice when you wanna chase down the enemy heroes. Gimli has no abilities av uh, available. Leap attack is on cooldown. And Aragorn is gonna potentially take him down. Oh, Cloud Break is being used. No, it was not the Cloud Break. Aragorn, by the way, has now level 4. Remember, Aragorn has a huge power spike with level 10, guys. He can summon army of the dead. And King Dane is going down just like that as well. But look at the power points from Mr. Smog. He has collected 25 power points already. After killing all these, you know, dwarven heroes. While he was able to keep all his heroes alive. The Knights of Tolamrov are hitting like a truck against King Bran. What is this damage, ladies and gentlemen? They are one-shotting the guy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Aragorn level 5. The level 6 is going to unlock the LN deal, which is going to be another fear effect. They're going to run wild, the enemy units. And Boromir is level almost 10. Army of the Dead is available. I don't know what to say. The Knights of Tolamrov are going to be able to defend this potentially. And uh, yeah, he went for the Summon Citadel, by the way. I don't know where he was using it. Uh, he was using it around this side. I don't know where. He can tell you. Uh, he was using it defensively for some reason. I don't know about this. What? Army of Jedi is available, by the way. Uh, and Earthquake is gonna be up very soon as well. Aragorn is level almost 7, guys. Parami is almost level 8. 
Mineshaft in the front side is gonna be taken down. Aragon is getting more and more levels. It becomes scary, guys, because level 10, the Earth Breakers, um, yeah, that can, you know, win you to fight easily. By the way, if you don't know, um, the level 10 ability, oh, launched the Mighty Catapult, but uh, it was doing nothing against heroes, actually. Look at this. He killed his own builder, that's all. Uh, but the heroes are untouched, pretty much. The Mighty Catapult against heroes, not that effective. Okay, we're gonna have now the uh, the Wildman of Dunland, um, yeah, the Wildman of Dunland summon. Not the Wildman of Dunland, it's the Man of Deal, of course, my bad. <laughs> Alright, Man of Deal summon from the Dwarven player Mei Shadow Facts for defensive purposes. Aragorn is all about to hit level 8, Boromir is almost level 10. And the Man of the West player has now reclaimed the control of the game with the help of the Knights of the Alamrov, guys. They are almost level 5. Level 5 is gonna unlock the Charge of Glory. Which is a smaller version of the Glorious Charge from Theodine. But he might lose them. Yeah, they are, they are gone like this. And they're gonna give up so many power points as well. If you lose them, your opponent is gonna gain so many power points from killing them, guys. The Dwarven player has still a lot of command points. He has a great amount of resource income. But keep in mind that he lost every single hero. Gimli down, Dane down, Gloin down, but also King Brand is down. So he lost all the heroes he had on the field. You know, in reviving them is gonna take you a lot of time, but also a lot of money. And it looks like he doesn't have that much money available right now. Uh, Cloudbreak is gonna be back up very soon. Army of the Dead is available now for a long time. Uh, Gimli is gonna be his choice to revive first. Gimli is a nice hero. Once you get him level 5, he's gonna be an un unstoppable monster, guys. Uh, almost 15 power points collected afterwards for the Man of the West player, Mr. Smog. This game... <laughs> It's not over yet. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna go for the marketplace now to get more money. Just why not? He will need some money in order to keep the rangers on the field, get more of them on the field, upgrade them with fighter upgrades to make them stronger, to recruit some of the knights of the Lamrov because they cost 1200 each. They are very, very expensive units. But Earthquake is gonna change everything, I think. It's gonna be available in about a minute. Like, very, very soon. The, uh, the Summon Citadel, I don't know about this, why he was using that in a spot like this. I would like to see it more offensively. Yeah, your opponent will be able to take it down very fast, but you can actually use the launch the mighty catapult one time in a spot like this. Maybe you can damage these structures very, very big time. One of Gonda was used once again. Aragon is just making sure to kill those units in time, getting more and more experience. Thank you guys so much for the follows, by the way. Appreciate that so much. And welcome to the stream. Full command points. Gimli, level 4 by the way, only one level away from getting the Slayer unlocked, guys. And yeah, Earthquake, almost wake up. Cloudbreak available, Army of the Dead available, Heal is available to keep the heroes alive. And yeah, I mean, he has almost everything available. And we know what it means. He's gonna commit and he's gonna try to end the game, I think. He's gonna use these two abilities at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. However, the Army of the Dead is not gonna deal too much damage against the enemy buildings. It is more like an army killer ability. The Hobbit summon just like this. I don't know. He, I mean, I think at this point of the game, uh, Major of X is just trying to get some power points from left and right. Cloudbreak is coming in clutch. He was not even. He was reviving his King Dean, but he's not. Look at this. They are not getting scared from Cloudbreak. Army of the Dead, though, will be used for defensive purposes. And yeah, the army is gone. Gimli is taking a lot of damage. Look how much damage he's taking, guys. There is no escape. You can't run away from these dudes. Gil is just gonna delay, but not gonna deny. Just use sleep attack. Turn and use sleep attack on these units. And he's gonna do it, which is smart. King Dane is down first. He's gonna go for a leap attack. Maybe gonna get level 5? Or oh, he was actually hitting only one ranger from the battalion, which is very, very unlucky. And this combination is gonna be deadly now. Yes, Rohirrim, summon, and the earthquake, both available. So you can use it now on a spot like this, kill all the barracks once again, then use the Rohirrim summon and go for a finishing attack. Level 4 uh, um, Gloin, but he lost his um, Gimli and he lost his King Dane once again, guys. Tom Bombadil is doing a great job. The level 3 Manchef is going to be taken down next. I like how patient Mr. Smog actually is in this game. Many players will just rush the ability, like, you know, rush the army after that the second it's available. But it is not the case for Mr. Smog. He's playing very patient, very smart, going for right choices, right decisions. And that's why he is able to win the game, even though he was behind for the majority of the game, guys. And there we go. 
He's gonna use it. Oh, it was not the best spot to use it on, I guess. Um, not the best, because he was not hitting any of these buildings. He was only damaging this building, by the way, which is... Meh, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna be enough. He has, to, he has still triple barracks on the field. He has to get some pikemen in order to deal with the Rohirrim. I mean, he has Aragorn with level 8. He will deal a lot of damage to the fortress, but is this gonna be enough? The launch, the Mighty Catapult is still on cooldown. The heroes are forced to retreat with also Tildian on the field, finally. Uh, for a potential glorious charge play with level 6. I mean, the leadership from Tildin is kind of meaningless because every hero, Boromir, Aragorn, and Faramir, they have leadership unlocked already. Look at the damage from these ranges against the Battle Wagon with Fire Upgrade and leadership. That's actually huge. And yeah, I mean, uh, Major Effects is going to be able to survive this attack. Like, the Rohirrim, they were not able to achieve too much. They might be kind of able to take down this level 3 Mineshaft, but remember, Rebuild is on is available if i'm not mistaken it is available so he can use it to save it and the game isn't over yet i think if major of x manages to get his own earthquake this can end the game guys you know this can end the game but let's see he has to revive his king dane he has to revive his gimli very very important ruhirim are gonna be almost gone they won't be able to finish off this mineshaft i'm assuming I mean, if he uses the rebuild, it's gonna be definitely saved. But I think he doesn't even have to, right? He doesn't even have to, guys. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. Okay, Army of the Dead is on cooldown. Earthquake is on a cooldown. And we know they have a huge cooldown. Like, you, you know, it's not gonna be available in the next 3, 4, 5 minutes. 16 power points collected. 9 power points away from the from the power spike for Mage Shadow Facts. Ranger Summon is gonna be available now for the next attack. Mr. Smoke has almost unlocked every single ability from this spellbook, guys. He has all the abilities, right? Yeah, he has also Lone Tower. Yeah, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, 15, 15. I think he has it all. From Bombardier is 10, this 10. Actually, maybe he's missing one. I don't know. I, I, I'm not very sure, guys. Uh, Tildin is gonna be also on foot, which is smart, because this way you can share experience. And the Wanding Arrow is actually doing so much work, guys. Look at the slow on the hero. I mean, there is a Mineshaft, luckily he will be able to use that and get away. But look at the damage against this guy! Get away with your hero. Heal is coming in clutch. Beautiful trample. Power points are rising for Mage Shadow Fax. He has almost 18 power points collected now. We're gonna have Hobbit... Uh, we're gonna have Ranger Summon from Mr. Smog now for defensive purposes. Cloudbreak is, I mean, the Horn of Conde is on cooldown. The Cloudbreak is still on cooldown. Long shots are gonna be used, but I mean, there is not gonna be a follow up. The ranges from the summon, unlike the Men of Deal from the Dwarven faction, are not gonna have fire upgrade, by the way, which means their damage against buildings is gonna be very bad. But yeah, I mean, the game is back and forth all the time. 600 command points for the Men of the West player and 850 command points still for Major Ofex. I mean, Dwarven Riches is being super helpful, but Marketplace is very helpful as well. He's getting a lot of money. Recruiting now some more Knights of Dolamrov. I think Barrage was used on this level 3 stable before, but it was not enough to kill him. The stable is still remaining on the field. And the win condition definitely for Mr. Smog are these heroes, guys. Like Aragorn, almost level 9. One level away from getting the level 10, which is a huge power spike for Aragorn. Like, he's, re he's recruiting every hero beside Eomir and Gandalf. I think Gandalf would be also nice to have. Like, Gandalf, you can also have a Wombo combo potential with Horn of Conda, Cloud Break into the Wizard Plus. Get some levels on him. Try to get him level 10. Marketplace is down. Very good, by the way. Uh, King Dane is almost level 5. Level 5 is gonna be a huge power spike for this hero. You can nullify all the leadership here. And debuff the enemy units, which is gonna make them really weak. Or you can use it on yourself. Oh, the slow, though, the slow. Is this gonna be enough to take him down? There is a mineshaft, so he should be fine, I'm assuming. But heal is on cooldown, keep that in mind. I think he's fine. Okay, he's fine. I mean, also the dwarven heroes have a huge cooldown once they are level 10. I mean, huge uh, power spike once they are level 10. Like Gimli, once he gets level 5, he's gonna be already very, very strong. Obviously, Gloin with the... Oh, what was that? Oh, the launch the mighty catapult, right? Yeah, he was using the <laughs> using the defensively on these units. Very, very nice. I like it. Okay. Yes, all the heroes back on the field beside Gimli. I can't see Gimli on the field for some reason. I think Gimli is nice to have, especially this Gimli because he was level 4 already. Cloudbreak is almost gonna be back up. Yes, now finally all the abilities unlocked, I think. Hobbit allies there was the only one missing. On the other side. 
event for the cloud break like he needs now 18 power points still for his own earthquake and he, he needs a lot of time i think he has to just take a fight and yolo it you know because without this you can't win anymore i think he's getting more and more behind all the time losing command points remember he was sitting on full command points for a very long time now he's dropping down to 700 command points only which sounds dumb i know because saying only to 700 command points is a mistake but the fact that he was sitting on full command points for a very long time is actually and he was still not able to win you know okay tom bombadil is doing work aragorn level 9 now finally uh, the heroes from from major of x are level 9 on the king brand we have level 4 on the king zane we have level 4 also on uh, king gloin um, yeah, Gloin is gonna have the Shatterhammer, level 10 is a huge ability, also effective against Army of the Dead. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be like an Earthquake ability, which kinda deal a lot of damage. And here we have the uh, Royal Guard with level 8, which is always nice as well. Okay, uh, Cloud Break is gonna be used from, yeah, from the Man of the West player to stand the enemy units. But they are not being stunned because of King Dane. Um, yeah, I mean, let's see. They have double buff. It's a bad fight to take for the Man of the West player, in my opinion. Killing the Rangers first is smart. You don't want to kill the Aragorn first because Aragorn is very, very tanky, especially with the Blade Master. Kill is being used. And we will have Summon Citadel being used this time offensively. Aragorn might die here, guys. Aragorn might die here. He has to use Atelas. He's going to die. Oh, he's down. That's huge. That's huge. Theoden is going down as well. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad for the Man of the West play because look at his power points, guys. Oh, nice one. Launch the Mighty Catapult being used offensively. And the game changes just like that. Because look at the power point, command points from the Man of the West play. He has only 425. He has not enough money to revive his heroes, guys. And he has not left any more units on the field besides this units around this side. And all his abilities are on cooldown now. Like, what is, what is available? Nothing. Everything is on cooldown besides Revealed and Rallying Call. It's huge. The Men of the Hill, they are still remaining on the field for a long time. Let's see how much damage they will be able to deal. Will this be enough to kill the Fortress? I think killing the Fortress or trying to kill the Fortress is a mistake. You want to go slow? You want to kill this first. Shake Foundation is being used offensively on the, on the Fortress as well. But remember, he has Revealed ability available, guys. So he can buy some time. Longshot is incoming. It looks like he's not paying attention uh, attention with the Man of Steel. That was not even the long shot. That was Arrow Volley, guys. So he's gone now. Like Everything is down. And that's why I think it would be a better choice to try to kill the level 3 Archer range first. Or level 3 stable first. Uh, on the bright side for me, Shadow Fax, he has finally collected 19 power points. That's huge. He's only 6 power points away from his own Earthquake now. Finally. <laughs> and I think that's gonna be the end of the game. What a back and forth game. Like, power point wise, Mr. Smoke was so much ahead. That he was already able to use Earthquake twice. Army after that once. And yeah, the Summon Citadel is not being as effective as these two abilities in order, you know, the distraction power at least. This one is being used even defensively. Yeah, level 10. Maybe Gandalf would be nice to have. I don't know. We have level... We have King Zane sitting on the level 4 now for a really long time. There's a wall up coming up for the Man of the West player. I think the Builder is going to be taken down. Can easily take down the Builder right after that. The map is all red beside the inn at the bottom left side, guys. He was not able to recruit any Galadrian warriors so far. Full command points once again for Mage of X. Rohan Elias is going to be available. Earthquake is gonna be on cooldown, but they are gonna be both available at pretty much the same time. Army after that in about a minute. So I think the Dwarven player has to make sure to be a little bit faster in order to win the game before the next army after that, which is gonna, you know, buy more time for the man of the West player, Mr. Smuck. Yeah, I was able to re revive Aragorn. So Aragorn is gonna be on the field now with level 9. Only one level away from getting the army of the dead summon. Let's see. I mean, King Dane is coming in clutch because that's going to shut down the Horn of Gondor completely. Like, Horn of Gondor is going to be absolutely useless when King Dane is around. He has double well on these battle wagons for the sustain, so they're going to heal up faster. Rohan Elias is going to be very useless in a situation like this because he has a lot of pikemen on the field. So I think they're going to die the second they get spawned. But I still feel like that 
Mei Shadow Fax should be a little bit faster than he is. The tower at the top side is gonna be taken down. That's the Lone Tower from the Spellbook, by the way. He's gonna use the Rohan Allies defensively to keep this tower alive. And we finally see some upgrades coming now from the level 3 Forge. Upgraded Dwarven units are looking so nice. Mithril Mail purchased, Forge Blades not purchased just yet, but he's gonna poten potentially purchase this one as well. Okay, let's see. But Army of the Dead is back up, guys. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be Fiesta now once again, huh? Yeah, I think so, I think so. Army of the Dead is gonna be able to defend this attack. That's gonna buy some time for the Man of the West player. He will also get the chance potentially to use the Earthquake once again. On the other side, we have still five power, you know, five power points away from getting the Earthquake for the Dwarven player. Which is going to potentially be the win game winning thing. The farm is going down. Uh, Barrage is available by the way. Which can be used on these units. An army of the dead will be used. <laughs> I think he was just wasting too much time, you know. Barrage is coming in. Clutch! Beautiful Barrage by the way. He was killing the level 3 farm. And he will not be able to kill too many units. The level 3 blacksmith is going to survive this. But now... The Dwarven player is going to lose everything, guys. Like, all the heroes are going to be gone once again. And he has not that much money left, you know? Like, reviving them all together is going to cost you so much money. Aragorn, unfortunately, not getting any experience from the kills on these units. And also, Mr. Smoke has already every power point ability collected. So, he won't get too much from it, you know? He will only get some time to recover. The Rohan allies is gone. They were able to kill some mine shafts left and right. Uh, to reduce the command points a little bit, but he has still full command points, so he has a great amount of resource income with Dwarven Riches. Siran uh, Didan, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that, and welcome. Yeah, I mean, this is still remaining on the field, the launch to Mighty Catapult is still on cooldown. Earthquake is back up now, we're gonna see where he's gonna use it. I think the best spot to use it on is gonna be this area, to kill this Hall of Warriors and the level 3 mineshaft with the Dwarven Riches on it. Aragorn, Boromir and Faramir are on the field. Faramir is level 10. Boromir is level 10, by the way, both level 10. Uh, King Dane might be in trouble here. He's dealing like zero damage to Boromir. He's also level 9, by the way, but he's taking so much damage from Aragorn. Oh, there was a... Aragorn might get a lot of experience here. He should be using this mineshaft to get away. He can't escape now. I think he won't be able to reach this side, right? Oh, yeah, he might be able because... Oh, Earthquake is gonna be used to kill the units and... The only escape ability from King Brand, but it looks like he's not gonna chase him down. Uh, thank you for the 10 bitty bombs. Long time YouTube sub. Just got a chance to join the live stream for a change. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the 10 bit donation as well. Appreciate that. He's gonna use rebuild, guys, on these units. Dario, my man, for three months. He's gonna use this offensively. Kill the expansions around the fortress. And let me check the power points from the Dwarven player. He has still only 20 power points collected, guys. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Like, this is so unfortunate. <laughs> I can't believe that. He still needs more than 4 power points for his huge power spike. But there is an Aragorn you have to deal with. There is a Boromir level 10. There is a Faramir level 10 you have to deal with first. And all your heroes besides King Brand are still dead. Is this game still winnable for Mr. Smog? I think it is, guys. I think it is. Yanni49, thank you so much for the follow. Okay, we have Gimli back on the fields now. Uh, he was not reviving Gimli last time. Gimli is gonna be a hero killer. I think you wanna have Gimli level 5 as soon as possible in order to, in order to kill those heroes fast. Because regardless if Boromir is level 10 or Faramir is level 10, once, once Gimli gets level 5, Slayer is a huge power spike for Gimli. And you can chase down Faramir and Boromir in no time. Take them down very fast. Okay, uh, we have a fight around this side. Man of the West player is pushing back from the left side, from the bottom side at least. Uh, Slamshot is on cooldown. King Brand is almost level 10. But again, his Beast Slayer arrow not very effective in this matchup against Man of the West. We have King Dane back on the field. Launch the mighty catapult on your phone! Oh, how can you forget about that? How can you forget about that? It's devastating, guys. Everything is gone just like that. Just like that. And the man of the West player is kind of down once again. Luckily, he has all the heroes remaining on the field, but the catapults are doing work. Now the power points are rising for the Dwarven player. I mean, he's gonna use the Ranger Summon. 
But again, they are not gonna be. Ooh, nice arrow volley and a nice long shot, by the way, from these Rangers. Kind of predicting the movement or the waypoint of these enemy units. Gimli, uh, King Brand is doing nothing. Gimli is gonna potentially hit level 5 here if he can get the experience from the kill on the farm. Almost level 5, half a level needed. They are committing against the Summon Citadel, guys. Will they be able to take it down? That's the question. Aragon is using Atelas. He's taking damage from the Hobbits. Remember, Hobbits are dealing a lot of damage to heroes. Look how much. It's an Aragon, almost level 10. If he can get the last hit on this Citadel, he can get actually level 10, guys. He can get... Oh, he was not able to get any experience from this kill, unfortunately. Uh, Gloin is level 5. 25 power points. Finally unlocked for Mage Shadow Fax. As we're gonna see a Tom Bombadil summon once again from Mr. Smug. The heroes, they are forced to disengage. And there we finally go. Can he actually do it? Can he deal the damage he's looking for? I mean, he has to hit these structures, guys. He has to hit the Fortress, the Stable, and the Barracks level 3. But they are level 3. They are not gonna get one-shotted. They are getting one. I take it back. Okay. Actually, it deals a lot of damage, man. Holy quack, like, holy quack, I'm holy. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. No more production building, by the way. He lost every, everything, right? Yeah. He lost everything. No Archer range anymore. No Barracks, no Stable. And he has only the heroes remaining on the field because the units he was just having on the field were from the summon. The Knights of the Long Ralph are gonna die potentially to King Brand. They are able to escape for now, but only two units are remaining from the battalion. And yeah, we have also Dwarven Zelots. Just why not? The elite units are finally joining the battlefields now from the level 3 Hall of Warriors from the Dwarven faction, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what a fiesta game. I love to see this one. Horn of Conde is being used, but. King Dean is there, ladies and gentlemen, right? King Dean, they are not being scared at all. Uh, eh, actually, I take it back. It was a cloud break from the Dwarven player this time. Just for the memes, there is nothing to stun because he has only heroes left on the field, right? Yeah, that's gonna be it. What a game. It was close. I couldn't tell who's gonna win until the very end. Smog was almost able to do that. That's gonna make the score even. And we're gonna have now 1-1. Uh, May Shadow Fax, the scoreboard was wrong, don't take it too serious, May Shadow Fax was losing 1-0, now he was able to make the score even after the game number 2, guys. So, game final, lose the bracket 2. Okay, so I was able to save this, I'm gonna share this replay for you guys in the Discord, if you wanna watch that over and over again. <laughs> okay, let's jump right into the game number 3. Alright guys, so that was, that was the first part of the finals of the loser's bracket, the score is 1-1. We're gonna continue with the more with the other games tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching it over at YouTube, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. The likes are helping out a lot on this channel. And subscribe if you haven't done it yet. I see you guys next time. Take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards, guys. Peace.